Finally tonight, House Speaker Paul Ryan on the real reason that he is retiring at the end of the year. It is our quote of the night. Watch. Some of you know my story. My dad died when I was 16. Uh, the, the daughter, the age my daughter is. And I just don't want to be one of those people looking back at my life, thinking I spent more time with my kids. When I know if I spend another term, uh, they will only know me as a weekend father. That is our story for tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. Tucker's up next. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. All indications out of Washington right now suggest a military strike against Syria could be imminent. President Trump tweeted as much this morning, warning Syria's ally Russia to get ready because missiles, quote, will be coming nice and new and smart. Speaking of smart, five years ago, in response to the last administration's plans to bomb Syria, Trump tweeted this, quote, be prepared. There is a small chance that our horrendous leadership could unknowingly lead us into World War III. Well, that was a wise response, the kind that could get you elected president of the United States. And yet here we are once again on the brink of something whose outlines and consequences are unknowable and terrifying. On Monday night, we spent more than 15 minutes talking about that. We asked what seemed like the most basic questions about a war in Syria, questions the geniuses on the other channels ought to be asking but are not. We're told we must attack Syria in order to punish President Assad for launching a chemical attack against his own people last weekend. It's our moral duty, endless CNN panels have reminded us, to uphold international standards of behavior and punish war criminals like Assad. Okay. But are we sure Assad was responsible for the gas attacks? Many people claim he was. They started claiming that within hours of the attacks themselves before many of the most basic facts were even known, and they're still claiming it. But where's the proof? They have provided no proof. They've just made loud noises and denounced the question askers. That's not enough. As American citizens, we have a right to know why we're doing this. The second question we asked on Monday was, how would attacking Syria help the United States? How would it help make us richer, or safer, or happier? You'd think our policymakers would keep that question foremost in mind always. They don't. They consider the effect on America an irrelevant consideration, maybe even offensive to consider. They are highly annoyed when you ask about it, like only an agent of a foreign government would want to know how a U.S.-led war might help the U.S. Well, it's easy to understand why other countries might want us to attack Syria. China, for example, they'd be thrilled by it. If you sought to displace America as the leader of the world, you'd want it to weaken its military and go broke. And nothing achieves that faster than a pointless war, as we've proved in the recent past. Again, those seem like basic questions. Nobody bothered to answer them or even engage. We had Senator Roger Wicker of Mississippi on the show Monday to talk about Syria. He didn't even try to explain how a war there might help the U.S. Instead, he suggested we were agents of Putin. The rhetoric of the left has corrupted establishment Republicans in Washington, and that's not surprising. The two groups have a lot in common, it turns out. Other pundits and Shays Lounge commanders accused us of disloyalty, too, all without answering our questions. Shut up, they explained. Over at CBS, they responded with ridicule. Stephen Colbert hosts The Late Show on CBS. You might not agree with his politics, but Colbert is not stupid. He's smart enough not to engage in a conversation that might reveal him as a mindless warmonger posing as a liberal. So we talked about pandas instead. It is unprecedented that the president's personal lawyer gets rolled up by Johnny Law. Everybody is covering this, and that includes Fox News, whose Tucker Carlson last night wasted no time in going straight at addressing our national nightmare. You know the official story about pandas. They're cute but adorably helpless, which is why they're almost extinct. But like a lot of what we hear, that's a lie. Pandas, it turns out, could easily kill you if they felt like it. Thank God they don't. Yes. Thank God they don't. And thank God that Tucker is covering what historians will call the pandemonium. Uh. Now, obviously, he didn't have time to cover the Michael Cohen raid because he had to talk about this very in-depth report. Colbert's bit went on for at least four minutes. We've condensed it out of kindness, while our original Panda segment lasted for 30 seconds at the end of Monday's show. And yet it's what CBS jumped on and CNN and a number of other outlets that have spent the last week pushing this administration to war. They have no interest in explaining how bombing Syria might help America. They don't care. And so instead, they make fun of pandas. There may be a real case for war in Syria. We'd love to hear it. We've been begging to hear it. We'd love to hear it from Stephen Colbert himself, by the way. He's welcome here anytime, though, of course, he'll never come.
So instead tonight we're joined by Noah Rothman. He's an associate editor at Commentary Magazine. He called us Russian propagandists and ostensibly patriotic too. But at least he was brave enough to come and explain himself. Noah Rothman joins us tonight. Noah, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So we have um, legitimate kind of news on this story. This comes from Reuters. Uh, the defense secretary was just asked specifically the question essentially we asked on Monday, the one that you called as traitors for asking, which is, do we know that Assad was behind the gas attack? And this is what the secretary of defense just said, quote, we're still assessing the intelligence ourselves and our allies. We're still working on this. So as with the gas attack last year, last April, the Secretary of Defense, who would know, has not confirmed that we know the Assad government did it. So why am I unpatriotic for asking the same question? Well, let me say at the outset, I have not called you a traitor. I did not call you unpatriotic. I would yes, not you did. question. I have no, it sorry, right here. You, you called me, and I'm quoting, an ostensibly um, patriotic American opinion maker who is advancing the geopolitical narratives in defense of a blood-soaked regime that threatens American interests. I'm not mm -hmm. attacking you. You are attacking me for asking the most basic of all questions, and it turns out that the Secretary of Defense well, I believe your question deserves questions. to be answered, but uh, okay. whether you know it or not, you are advancing pro-Assad narratives, and you should check out Iran TV, Press TV, and the Kremlin-funded network RT to see the favorable coverage you are receiving. Uh, I don't believe you're but doing that irrelevant. intentionally. that's irrelevant. No, no, but hold on. That's irrelevant to the question. I don't so let's seek answer the that. question. I don't seek that coverage. The Secretary of Defense has been asked twice directly on mm -hmm. this, and in neither case did he, in contrast to propagandists like yourself, say unequivocally, we know the Assad government did this. This is not an ancillary question, it's no, a central it's question. No, precisely the opposite. In fact, his comments, he made it very clear that he is not questioning the outcome of investigations like that conducted by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons or the United Nations Joint Investigative Mechanism, which went so far as to say not only do we find this to be Syria, uh, sarin in 2017, but Syria was responsible for it. These are uh, these are okay. investigations me, that were conducted in very thorough. If I can just read, and, and I have to say, I mean, I, again, I don't want to be mean to you, and I know you're, you're new to this, but here's part of the Q&A with the Secretary of Defense on the previous gas attack. And he's asked, is there credible evidence about sarin and chlorine? No, I have not got that evidence, not specifically. I don't have the evidence. What I'm saying is that other groups on the, on the ground, NGOs, fighters, have said sarin has been used. We are looking for evidence. I don't have evidence, credible or uncredible. That was the response from the actual exchange. Yeah. I don't know, is he an agent of Putin too for saying that? I don't know why you would suggest that. He is saying that we don't have assets on the ground in Western Syria, which is frankly the truth. Those who have been on the ground in Western Syria, again, the OC, uh, the CW, and the United Nations, have established rather definitively that this 2017 attack was a sarin attack. Now, this cr most recent attack, there hasn't been a comprehensive report oh, because stop, it just oh, happened. Stop. Oh, stop. No, but nobody is contesting the nature of the attack. That's immaterial. We can determine what the chemical was. The question is who launched it? Because that's the question on right. which our action turns. Correct. If it was launched by rebel groups, then we probably wouldn't attack the Syrian army in response. So who did it is the question. And, and the U.S. government has not definitively determined that. That's all I said on Monday, and you accuse me of defending a blood No, what regime. you said actually is that this was a propaganda designed to manipulate the American public opinion, essentially questioning the Trump administration, suggesting that they, are, they have misled the public into war, and that is a very strong accusation. I am questioning anyone, hold on, I'm questioning anyone who states as fact what he doesn't know as fact. That's it. It is propaganda to say something that you don't know is true and pretend well, that you do, do know, know it's true. that the, uh, the rebels do not have an air force. We know that these were delivered by air. We know that they contain, can they're delivered by canisters. They have been appearing in a variety of different places, which is compression, which is what you need to use a precursor for sarin nerve gas. And those are information that is delivered to us by people on the ground. We do not have American assets in Western Syria. So right. we do rely so, on other so people to provide we, us I'm this a, information. But when you say other people, these are people with skin in the game, in the civil war currently unfolding. And look, I am not here to defend, and I hardly ha would have to say this with a rational person, the regime of, of Assad. Why sure. would I? I'm an American. My interest is only in what's best for America. And, and we should establish what that interest is. Exactly. And that's why actors like you and on many other channels and all over the left, you're hearing people say what you said, which is it's unpatriotic or, in fact, treasonous, in effect, to ask these questions. And I'm just saying, how do you account for the fact that the secretary of state is saying the same thing I said on Monday? Do you think he's disloyal? I mean, that's a real question based on the columns you've written. No, I say, and I will repeat, that you are mischaracterizing his remarks. He is not 
calling into question the evidence that has been put, supplied to the United Nations investigators and the OCDW. But if you do want to get into why it is necessary to respond to these attacks in the American interest and not in some vague notions of morality, then we should talk about that because I agree that the American public has not been informed by the political class as to what American interests are at okay, stake well, in Please Syria. don't speak of the political class as if you stand outside it. You are a, a clearly acting as a tool on behalf of people who want the U.S. to proceed with war, and maybe we should. And I, I keep an open mind because I don't know, but I do know lying when I see it, and you've engaged in it, and a lot of others have too, pretending you know what you don't know. So now you tell me why it's in America's interest to wage war in Syria. Two points. Number one, the United States has troops all around the world. Chemical weapons are relatively ubiquitous and pretty cheap. When Americans come into contact, even casual contact with these, as they did in Iraq, it can affect you for the rest of your life. We do not want to see a future in which chemical warfare has become a status quo of well, the I battlefield, because the United States will come into contact with it and American soldiers will yes. suffer from it. Secondarily, in the last 14 months, there have been two state-sponsored terrorist attacks on foreign soil, Russia and North Korea respectively, using weapons of mass destruction, using chemical nerve agents. This is a very dangerous re new reality and we need to stop it now but and reestablish the agree deterrence. more. But of course you're you're arguing parallel to the real argument which is how do we respond and who did this? And so we know that rebel groups have in their possession there's video of it since we all trust video now of them in, in possession of chemical weapons. So really if you seek to deter the use of chemical weapons in the future you'd want to punish the people who use them this time and as we stated at the outset and you agreed we're not sure. So why are we also anxious to punish I didn't say that, actually. People? Taking your premise at face value, there is only some UN reports that suggest in 2013 that rebel groups, Islamist groups, did get their hands on chemical weapons as a result of the implosion of the Syrian state. And right. the lesson there is to prevent the implosion of a state that has chemical weapons. Uh, right. if, you were to, if you were to nip this in the bud, as it were, then you would want to make sure you interdict any future possibilities in which rebel groups as that we no longer believe are reliable that okay. can get their hands on these weapons. Right. Well, they're not reliable, which is why I don't want them in charge of Syria, which is why I'm not calling for a war with Syria in contrast to you. But can we end? We're out of time on this one point, which is if you want to have an adult conversation about adult issues, don't wouldn't you agree that it's helpful not to call names, but to engage with the actual questions? It is. That's why I did not people. call you names. And I did not dismiss you. I answered your questions directly. <laughs> Self-awareness, not your strong suit. But I appreciate your coming on tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Nigel Farage is the former head of the UK Independence Party. He helped lead the Brexit campaign. He's been a long time, a pretty vehement supporter of President Trump, one of the very few on the island in which he lives. He joins us tonight. Uh, Nigel, thanks for coming on. Thank As a you. Trump supporter, what do, you, what do you make of the move toward engagement war with Syria? Well, just think about what's happened over the course of the last 15 years or so. Um, Iraq, we went in, uh, we tried to get rid of the Arab nationalist dictator, we succeeded. What was the result? Hundreds of thousands of death and chaos. Libya, the same. We go in, we get rid of an Arab nationalist leader that we don't like, and we open the door for ISIS and, of course, the crisis we've seen coming over the Mediterranean to Europe. So our track right. record, our track record of intervening because morally, we think we should, without a proper strategy, without working out a long-term plan, is bad. And let's just look at this. A week ago, the president said American troops would pull out of Syria. Tonight, we appear to be on the verge of perhaps quite large-scale military action, and not just with America, France and Britain joining to. Do we have a plan? Can you imagine if the scale of the strikes was such that Assad got toppled. Do we actually think that would make Syria safer and better? You know, whatever we think, whatever we think of Assad and the support that he's had from the Russians, they have just beaten ISIS militarily in the field. So there are some big issues here where we have similar interests. And yet the advocates for this are telling us that somehow Assad, which has been, at, his government has been at war with Sunni extremists for years, was somehow in league with ISIS. So it raises a larger question, why all the lying? What, what is this really about? I'm honestly confused, I, I, but I know lying when I see it, and it's going on now uh, in a large scale. Yeah, I understand that. Um, uh, but I'm also curious, too, as to why Donald Trump, who was so clear in 2013, as indeed I was, as to why it was not a good idea to get involved in Syria. It was not a good idea to arm the rebels. Quite why Donald Trump appears to have had this change of mind, I don't know. Uh, it's seemed for some time 
that the globalists in the West need to have an enemy and yes. kind of want, want to have a war. And, you know, going to war is the most serious decision any government can ever take. This should not be done without clear strategy. And I'll give a warning, a warning to all the politicians here in Britain and many of those in America. You and your chums in your clubs tonight may think this is the right thing to do. Be very careful and very cautious about public opinion. A poll out in Britain today shows only one in four Britons supports military action, and I'll bet in America it's not a majority either. But if you don't believe in democracy, it doesn't really matter. Last question quickly. Do you think that one of the purposes of war would be to divert attention from the fact that you're not taking care of your own people. You're elected to look after your own people. And when you don't, maybe having a war is a way to change the conversation. Uh, yes, it is. Um, it's also a great deflection away from all sorts of uh, social issues, uh, you know, which, which, which really uh, give all of our problems great countries. The first role of government is to protect and maintain the interests of its citizens. Exactly. However horrible things in Syria are, they do not affect directly American interests or British interests either. And I hope our leaders think again. I hope so too. Nigel Farage, thank you for that, for that thank clear you. explanation. Well, the hunt for Russian collusion has become something very different. It's now suddenly a deeply invasive look at the sex life of the president. Why is that? Does the left stand for this now? Do they support it? Some of us remember a very different time recently in American history. We'll unpack it in just a minute with Piers Morgan. Tucker Carlson is brought to you by